I'm here with Dr. Mark Colonna. He's the co-discoverer of a laser phenomenon known as PIPS, photon-induced photoacoustic streaming. It's used in dentistry for root canal therapy, surgeries, things like that. Uh, Mark, can you please tell us the story? How, does, how do lasers help with root canals? Well, in short, PIPS, photon-induced photoacoustic streaming, um, what it does is it creates a shock wave in a fluid that you can use very, 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 very low energies with uh, virtually no heat um, accumulation at all in the fluid, and it removes biofilm um, like there's no tomorrow. And uh, it does it in about 20 seconds worth of time, whether it be in the root canal or whether it be in a periodontal pocket. Um, and in short, that's really what it accomplishes. Yeah, so when we're normally doing root canals as dentists or endodontists, we're sitting there trying to clean out the main canal system. It's like a river, but the problem is oftentimes failure happens because there's little feeder creeks, they call them lateral canals, that house uh, dead tissue and bacteria and their toxins, it, right? It, it, exactly. And so what, 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 what standard needle irrigation does and even ultrasonics is just kind of moves fluid around, but it doesn't push it into areas where we cannot get it into. So you can take medicaments and your irrigation solutions and get it into the lateral canals and the anastomosis in the in in bigger roots like in lower molars and such and even upper premolars and lower premolars and it moves fluid three dimensionally through the tooth in about 20 seconds you can get complete fluid um complete fluid uh circulation throughout the entire tooth get your um and get your uh, irrigation solutions in all those areas and be well assured that you have biofilm removed and our research actually showed and proved that we can do it in about 20 seconds with very low fluences on the laser. And what were the settings on the laser? It was an erbium laser, right? Yeah, so erbium YAG laser. We, we, we initially um, got our discovery on an erbium chromium YSGG laser, but the uh, erbium YAG laser actually has, um, it's a digital pulse laser and it uh, goes down to 50 microseconds pulse duration and in some cases 25 microseconds pulse duration yeah. and you can create uh, a very big pulse with very low settings so basically the settings on the erbium laser are well you got 15 15 uh 15 millijoules at 20 hertz with no air and no water you don't really need a water spray or anything because you're using irrigation <laughs> syringe to put the fluid in to the access and you put the tip just really in the access prep you don't have to put it into the canal system at all and the, and the fluid just perpetuates all the way through and, and just goes completely through the, the root canal system in, like I said, in about 20 seconds. And the pulse duration setting is uh, 50 microseconds? 50 microseconds is the best, which is SSP on the on the, on the Fatona Lightwalker. Yep. Um, you can use a, a, a software enhancement that they have called sweeps that can drop it down to 25 microseconds pulse duration, which gives you even a, a bigger bump, sends a little more fluid down to the apex. It's actually a brilliant... Uh, um, addition to the light walker that Fatona did. Instead of a static uh, chemical, you know, cleansing, this is more of a dynamic thing. It it just makes a massive difference in my in my experience. Well, it speeds up the process drastically too, because normally you have to leave irrigants, according to the scientific journals, you have to leave irrigants in a canal system for roughly ten minutes. You have to just irrigate and and irrigate and irrigate and irrigate. And this this actually eliminates that step, so you can actually go ahead and get this root canal completely done in a period of just a few minutes, basically, because you got 20 seconds is really all you need. Now, we always use more. We like to say, you know, use 60 seconds when you go ahead and irrigate. But yep. if you uh, you could do it technically in 20 seconds, especially for single canal teeth or even like upper premolars that don't have multiple roots, that kind of a deal. Yeah, you know, some uh, good analogy, I think, for the lay audience would be like if I soak dirty clothes in a static tub, versus sticking it in a washing machine with a dynamic action. I'm more, I'm going to get things cleaner, faster, and more efficiently. You know, so the way I look at it, you know, the irrigation with just the chemistry in the normal root canal scenario, is just like laying the laundry in a tub and having to wait. Well, exactly. And so you're dealing with what we call, you know, it's agitation. So yeah. what do they call it in, in, a, in, a, in a washing machine? Agitation. So as the as the little circular thing moves the clothes around, it agitates the clothes, which gets those the 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 fluids into the fibers, which then cleans the dirt out, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very similar concept, and I think you're that's a really good analogy. You know, another thing is uh, I've been using it a lot in surgeries, like when I do extractions to prevent things like cavitations, which were basically uh, necrotic bone residual. 
In other words, if you leave uh, certain infected peritoneal ligaments in place or part of an abscess, you know, oftentimes it gets walled off and it leads to all kinds of nasty, you know, that's in the literature. Like I think they're they're calling it CCL5 or Rontes, and that stuff is toxic as hell. And well, think, all think kinds of maladies. Yeah, and think in terms of the fact, let's say you do an extraction or let's even you forget the extraction. Let's say you do an osteotomy for an implant. Yeah. And you've got all the little osteo pieces that are in there from making your osteotomy. Right. And you could even introduce some bacteria in there inadvertently because there's airborne bacteria in the operatory. Now you go ahead and you use use the the, the prod, you know, use PIPs, photon induced photoacoustic streaming, and you and and or sweeps and you clean out that socket prior to putting in your PRF, prior to putting in ozone or anything else you're going to put in that socket and then place your your bone graft example. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's so many ways that you can use this, this uh, photon induced photoacoustic streaming or PIPs again, sweeps enhanced with uh, this laser to enhance what you're doing clinically and create a result that you're going to have probably less chance of failure, much more or less chance of failure. And the yeah. research is starting to show that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And how long has this been around about 20 years now, right? A little over. Well, we, we actually, actually not quite. So we're getting close for 19 years. We discovered it in 2004. Yeah. And it was, um, it was in, in an operatory <laughs> by mistake. And um, we just kind of, we we're using clear teeth to show how the root canal fiber you know, in the, from the laser works down in the root canal, we saw this fluid moving three-dimensionally and we went, whoa, what are we seeing here? And again, under the microscope. And yeah. we could see that fluid was moving three-dimensionally in all three roots of a three-rooted molar, which shouldn't technically have happened. And from there, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, um, was we just did 10 years of research and a lot of documentation and publications in peer-reviewed journals and um, showed the biofilm removal with laser confocal microscopy and a lot of other ways we did that and uh, a lot of samples and a lot of other professionals that actually helped out um, in the studies themselves. It wasn't just me and, and my research team. It was me, research team, and a bunch of other independent people as well. Yeah. What would you tell the unindoctrinated um, endodontist or general dentist who's doing root canals when you know they don't know anything about the lasers and the augmentation and the advantage of adding that to their endodontic treatment. Traditional irrigation doesn't go three dimensionally through the entire um, tooth in, in the root canal system. It just doesn't. It, it takes hours <laughs> to actually irrigate and cleanse and shape, so to speak. This allows you to remove all the dental debris, the biofilm, and everything in roughly a twenty second to forty second, maybe even a minute time and so it cuts your irrigation down removes the biofilm excessively fast and um, it's been scientifically proven which is what you want if you're going to use something you want to use something that's been scientifically proven in peer-reviewed journals and this has what's the goal of a root canal the goal is to remove the biofilm if you remove the biofilm you're going to have success in yeah. past we've left stuff behind we've entombed bacteria we've entombed ba- um, biofilm in there with our sealers and with our gutta percha and um, we hope for the best. And as uh, one very famous endodontist said, I look at the obituaries every morning to see if I have a success yeah. and uh, because he won't have to retreat those. And uh, now we get to the point where we don't have to worry about retreatments anywhere near as much. Yeah. Um, nothing's 100 percent, but it's about 98 percent successful at this point, And the research proved that out. I've been adding ozonated water as an irrigant and the final flush after the sodium hypochlorite and the EDTA. Um, What's your opinion of that? I think ozonated water, I think it's genius. It's brilliant. Um, Ozone, as we know, O3, it um, reacts with the singlet oxygen that separates from the O3. And um, it is, uh, it will kill anything in its path that doesn't have antioxidant properties. And we know that bacterium, biofilm and prions and viral particles do not have that. And the human cells do. So therefore, you're only going to um, have uh, have this extermination of those that don't need to be there. Yeah, that's a good thing. Another thing is uh, fungi, you know, because that's relevant in the endodontic uh, scenario, too. It's not absolutely just good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I consider all that biofilm, I mean, you put all that together and that's what's going on in those sockets. That's what's yeah. going on in the root canal system. That's what's going on in the body. We have this biofilm issue. And that's what PIPS does a very incredible job at removing. 
in the old days, we would do root canals conventionally with files and all those things and clean out the root canal and get all the junk out that we possibly can using irrigation through a syringe into the tooth. And it would just get to the areas it can reach. With PIPs, it actually perpetuates throughout the entire three-dimensional system of the root canal and the complexities that are inside the root canal anatomy itself. And so we can, in a period of 20 to 40 to maybe 60 seconds, and depending on the size of the tooth and the root system, irrigate that out, remove the bacteria, remove all the harmful products that are creating the infection for the patient and get a pretty well guaranteed good outcome with very little, if any, post-operative sensitivities afterwards, which makes the patient feel much better and relieved of pain. PIPS, if you want to Google that, is uh, photon-induced photoacoustic streaming, and it creates a shock wave in a fluid utilizing the laser energy from an erbium laser, and it agitates fluid, and it's a very holistic way to treat the human body in a very gentle way to remove to move fluids and to remove bacteria and other um, what I call you know viral particles which, that are in the body that that creates a disinfection and in some cases a a almost like a, st a sterilization process within the root canal or a periodontal pocket or any other or even a an act an, an abscess tooth that you've removed to doing an extraction so there's many different ways to use this phenomena i would say it's fair to say um, laser assisted root canal therapy might be the missing link as to why so many root canals fail wouldn't you I would absolutely say that because in the 85 to 90 years that root canals have been done prior to PIPS's introduction into the field and actually discovery, um, we didn't have a way to literally get the fluids into the root canal system, which is a three-dimensional canals of, of all sorts of ways that the nerve goes into a tooth, like the back of your hand. If you look at the, if you look at the, the anatomy of the veins in the back of your hand, you can see that's what it looks like inside of a tooth three-dimensionally. So yeah, we didn't have that all those years. And so you were kind of guessing you would entomb those bacteria. Or right now we don't, we don't have to do that. You do in-office training too, don't you? I do in-office training when everybody wants me. I'm just show up at your office. Just give me a call or send, send me an email. Great. Thank you very much. You betcha, Nick. <laughs> Thank you.